And yes, when you can't socially distance yourself from the people around you, make sure that you have your mask on, especially when you step out of home. It's still TV3 New Day, and this morning, uh, social media has been inundated with a story about a student at the Cairn UST Senior High School who unfortunately needed some intervention, but for four whole hours, uh, he was only attended to by his fellow uh, students on campus. And as a result, after four hours, when his father picked him up and sent him to the hospital, he unfortunately passed on. And so this is a tweet that says, that look how the teachers watched on as a student lost his life at KNUST SHS. He died of an ulcer, apparently, uh, but no one helped him because they suspected it was COVID-19. But then again, since we don't have any confirmation, um, you know, from the Ghana Health Service and the school authorities, we'd rather wait and be sure to get some confirmation. And so this is the video of that student who was being supported by four other students as well. Uh, we hope that it can load so we can play it for you. But this is the actual situation, and it's caused the students to riot. Our correspondent is currently on campus. We'll be crossing over to him uh, when we get the feed so you can see what exactly is happening. But if you can get to watch the video eventually. But anyways, let me just move on. There's a video of these students rioting last night as well, as you can see. It's not too clear, by the way, um, but this is exactly what happened on campus last night because these students were agitated because the teachers did not respond to um, the students. Apparently, they were all scared that he might have COVID-19. And so this was posted in the evening. Now, I'll just go quickly and read some comments that sought to make some allegations against the headmistress and some of the teachers. And so this one says that the headmistress said her car is not used to pick sick people and of course reported speech we're waiting for confirmation but again um the headmistress told the students that is it dead bodies that they've not seen before and someone asked what school they said knust shs so whilst the students were demonstrating the headmistress apparently drove her car uh, at top speed through the crowd um let's move on to the next message that said that so there was no solid uh, yeah, trying to increase it so you can also get to read. So there was no solid food on campus as at that time. So it was drinks that were given to the boy. And because of the high sugar content, it worsened the case. At least a teacher could have gone out to purchase food for the boy to survive. Among those teachers who were standing there were the two dining hall masters. And they are both house masters. But the one who called, but the one called Terminator is also the assistant senior house master and a house master as well and so these are some confirmations i mean from students basically as to why they could not save the boy's life and so that's him um receiving help and let me see if i can now play the video okay so these are supposed to be some teachers apparently um with the students so we'll be crossing over to the KNUST SHS to speak to one of our correspondents to give us details as to what exactly is happening. This morning, he informed us that they are rioting and uh, he's been able to have an interaction with the headmistress of the school to ascertain um, the veracity of these tweets as well and also to find out if there was any form of help that was given the student whilst he waited for his father. And so that's the video in the background, again, with some students supporting uh, this particular student. These are supposed to be, apparently, um, the, the teachers who stood away from the situation and were too scared to come close to the student because they suspected that he may be suffering from, um, you know, from... COVID-19. So also we'll be having a conversation. This also ties into the situation at the Accra Girls Senior High School where students started demonstrating as a result of the confirmation that some six students had tested positive along with a teacher and a spouse. And so the Ghana Health Service in collaboration with the Ghana Education Service came out to confirm these allegations and they insisted that of course they were ensuring that all safety protocols were being adhered to. And so we'll be having a conversation with Dr. Newman Arthur to find out what kind of impact this is going to have on the students' ability uh, to study as we all know that they are preparing for their final exam. So Ibrahim Abubakar is joining us from the KNUST Senior High School to update us on what exactly is happening currently. Good morning, Ibrahim. Good morning, Bella. All right, so following uh, from yesterday's events, what really is the situation on campus right now? Well, Bella, for now I can tell you that uh, everything has come at a standstill here. 
Um, the students just briefly break on the demonstration. They told me they will be back. They were demonstrating massively here um, five minutes ago, but they've gone back. Um, apparently, the GES regional director is here, so she wants to meet them. But they are angry. Um, one thing I can also add is that uh, we have the presence of the police here, both yeah. armed and unarmed. Yeah. They've been able to do their work professionally to ensure that they wouldn't touch any students. They just made sure that students wouldn't extend their demonstration to the administration where um, they can cause any chaotic situation there. But Bella, last night I was scared they were demonstrating, but fortunately the police was able to contain the situation. Okay. What really happened last night? So, um, last let me start on Monday. On Monday, one of the students complained that he's having some stomach problem. Mm. So he went to that administration seeking for medical attention. But told him they called his parents to come for him. Uh, management here have told me that uh, the protocol here, what they do is that anytime a student is not feeling well, they will come, they will call the parents to come for them. And if the parents tell them that they cannot come, then they will take the next step of sending the students to the facility because okay. they do not have any work there here. They don't have any facility to attend to the work here. So on Monday, when the students complained, they called the parents who told them that they will be coming here. So later in the evening, the parents came, they took the child home and sent him to Mencia Government Hospital. So yesterday evening, the child passed on. So okay. when the students had started agitating, because according to them, on Monday, they took the school authorities to send the child, the student, to the nearest facility, which is the KNUSD hospital, because he was complaining of pain. But the management told them they called the parents, and they didn't want the students that whoever tries to. Um, assist the child or send him to the uh, nearest health facility, mm. he will be devoted. So that was so they put it to that. So when the child passed on, yes, they, they blame the authorities okay. for negligent and delay. But there was and a video. Now, uh -huh. Before you move on, there was a video of the students supporting whilst some other men, purported to be teachers of the school, stood at bay and watched. Um, is that really a confirmation that those were teachers? And if that's the case, was it really true that they did not want to touch the student because they suspected he had COVID-19? The, the suspicion of COVID, that one we cannot confirm. But it's, it's true, the video that you saw, and that's why they were even pointing accusing fingers to one of their um, housemaster, Mr. Oushu. They said he was there and he told them point blank. That's according to the student that... Mm. Even a child or if the student dies, it's no news because this is not the first time a student is dying on this campus. And the students are also telling us that within this year alone, this is the seventh time, seventh time, they've had seven deaths. And all okay, usually around Tuesday. So some of them are even raising suspicion of spirituality, not necessarily COVID. Okay. But the point here is that I know before the president allowed final year students to go to school. Mm -hmm. He said if you are student, you have to be the God in life. And this comes that every um, senior high school must get an isolation center and a team of medical team will be on standby to attend to their health needs. But you yeah. come here again with this. Wow. Okay. A isolation center that the they don't have an isolation yeah, center. So that is, they don't have the isolation center. I okay. spoke to management. They told, told me they don't have any isolation center because they thought the regional GS will bring them a medical team so that they will at least allot one of their block block as isolation. Okay. Okay. Anyway, Ibrahim. Ibrahim, we'll come back to you later uh, during the day to get some more updates on this particular situation. But thank you so much um, for your updates so far. And that's Ibrahim Abubakar. And he was just giving us some information as to what exactly is happening. So clearly, there's no confirmation that this student may have died from COVID-19. I mean, per his report, uh, it's even more tied to spiritual attacks than uh, COVID-19 because this is the seventh student who has died 
at the KNUST Senior High School since the beginning of this year. Uh, we're tying this in with what happened at the Accra Girls Senior High School where students were agitating as a result of the confirmation that six of them had tested positive for COVID-19, plus a teacher and one of the teacher's spouses as well. So we want to find out from Dr. Nimanatha, who is a clinical psychologist, what kind of impact this is going to have on the students psychologically and if this would impede the ability uh, to study effectively for the final exam. So let's cross over uh, to Dr. Neiman now. Good morning, Dr. Dr. Neiman. Dr. Neiman, good morning. Dr. Neiman, can you hear us? Yes, good morning. Good morning. I can't, your voice is very faint. Sorry about that. I'm going to try and project. But I'm sure you heard from our correspondent at the uh, KNUSCS SHS. Uh, along with what has been happening at the Accra Girls Senior High School and some daughter reports here and there that some students may have tested positive for COVID-19. What do you make of all of this? Uh, I think that uh, uh, things like that uh, uh, takes my mind back to some of the uh, episodes we had uh, COVID-19, uh, 360. Yeah. I think that there were some sessions we talked about this. And so personally, I'm not surprised. <laughs> you know, if you look at the situation, the kind of systems we have in our secondary schools, our secondary schools cannot handle COVID-19 issues uh, because of how the system is. One, they, they are overcrowded. Mm. Two, even for normal illnesses, a lot of students do not go to the dispensary because conditions at the dispensary is not, um, is not conducive enough for students to re receive proper medical care. I have worked in some dispensaries before. Mm -hmm. And so um, I don't think the schools can handle cases like that. I think in one of the shows we said that we even need to have a rehearsal, mm -hmm. you know, in the various schools as to exactly what they would do when they suspect a case or something, something happens. So personally, I'm not surprised what is going on because the schools are not capable to be able to handle COVID-19 uh, issues. But we're talking about students here, and especially for the senior high schools. Uh, these are teenagers. Basically, they're they also still maturing. It might be very difficult, um, you know, to handle situations such as these, plus going to class and studying and preparing for the exam. So what are the psychological impacts um, of these issues or situations on the students? Uh, generally, uh, exams itself comes with its own anxiety and stress. Mm. And those who are not able to cope properly realize that they may even go into some, some depression for some time. Uh, those who are struggling to cope may have those kind of issues. And so combining with, with the stresses of the season, you know, following all the protocols, social distancing, the hand sanitizers, washing your hands frequently, you know, when you go to your dormitories, how you relate with your friends and all that, you know, and the anxiety of asking who doesn't have it, whether mm -hmm. I would get it or not, and situations like what we were seeing, it adds on to their stresses, adds on to the anxieties, and you will not be able to concentrate on, on, your, on, your, on your academics. It will be very difficult. Mm. And so this season is very, very, very difficult even for students. And it's likely going to affect their performance. And because already there are some people who are struggling with, with the academics. And there are some teachers who may also be scared to, to be coming for, to, uh, for, for, uh, to teach them all the time. So all these things, because some students may go to teachers for extra attention if they, if they are struggling with their studies and all that. All those things won't be there in this season. So personally, I expect that uh, based on all the things that is happening, it may affect you know this year's performance generally. But how do and, we, and so that is it. And, yes. How do you advise students manage this? Because clearly you're stating that it, it 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 will affect them, but there should be a way around it. Uh, sincerely, it is difficult to advise <laughs> because. You know, the situations happening in various schools is very, very practical. Maybe what I would advise is that people should have a positive attitude towards everything that is happening. Now, you see, all over the world, the discussion has changed from how many people are being infected to how many people are dying. That is, that is the, the discussion now. So, okay, people are getting infected. So what? Are they dying? And are the numbers really significant to shut down everything? I think that is the discussion. So mm. what I would say is that students shouldn't panic. 
If you look at the impact of people, now we know that it is not as we envisage. So they shouldn't panic. They should have a certain positive attitude towards whatever is happening. If any student is really struggling to cope, they should be able to seek you know, attention from, from the right people. Okay. Probably speak to uh, some of the nurses on, on, on campus, then they may have to refer them to see uh, some professional of a sort to attend to them. Okay. Uh, their, to, to attend to their specific needs. But from where you but sit, as a, as a clinical yes. psychologist, would you then say that it was um, an unconscionable decision by governments to open up the schools and allow these final year students to go back and complete the semester? Uh, well, I think that, um, like I told you now, the discussion is not about how it is spreading, but how it, the, whether people are dying or not. All over the world, and whether we should shut everything now because of those numbers. And so I, I, I'm not sure the, what the government, you know, the, the reasons for, for the decision. But I think that um, what I am concerned about is that regardless of the decisions, uh, the decisions we take, we need to have specific measures to be able to deal with the impact of the decisions we, we make. That is my position. In this season, you can't shut down everything because of the numbers we're having. But we need to be able to, you know, think through the whole system, become, be real with the situations in our various schools. And the reality is that it will be difficult to control the crowds. It will be difficult to control the, the behaviors of students. Mm. And if things like that happen, what are the specific measures we, we're supposed to take to be able to deal with it? Are we empowering the dispensaries enough to handle cases like that? That is my position. Regardless of the decision the government takes for the good of everything, we need to be able to rehearse in our minds, in the various schools, have a proper discussion and rehearsal okay. as to the specific you know, steps we are going to take when these issues come up. If we don't, in the coming days, things are going to get worse. Mm. Because now... The students are going to be the source of the infection to the community. Okay. If we say they should go home now, maybe now, for example, if Accra girls is six, now probably it's spread to a lot more students. Yeah. If we say they should go home now, all those students who have been infected, they are now going to be the source of the infection for their families and their communities. Okay. And that all is right. how serious the thing is. But the question is that, okay, if they get, what is, what is the, what is the big exactly. deal about it? Okay. The deaths, you know, we expect, we are not having them. So what is the big deal? I think that is where the discussion is going now. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Dr. Isaac Newman Arthur. He's a clinical psychologist. And we've just been speaking on the psychological effects of some of these agitations uh, in the various secondary schools on uh, students' ability to study effectively for their final exams. There's